Jesus, we come before you with open hearts and open minds to receive the word that you have given this morning to be brought forth. As we gather to not only comfort this family at the loss of their grandfather and great-grandfather and great-great-grandfather, we're also celebrating the home going of your son, Donald. We're so grateful that he worked through the things that he was challenged by and was able to come into your presence that you had literally sent your angels to gather him home. Father, I hope and pray that knowing his destination is in your arms brings comfort to these that mourn his passing. That they too would begin to press in and examine their own lives so that they can rejoice with Donald in heaven, having arrived themselves. That they would not let anything of this world hinder that which Donald held close to his vest, his relationship with you. He was more than an overcomer. He conquered. And so we're grateful for this family that has come from him. And those that were his brothers and sisters and those that have gone on before him that welcomed him. But we ask that you bring by your spirit this morning a greater understanding of the issue that lies before each of us, life and death. Help each one of us to choose daily life and to walk in the blessings that you have so richly provided for each of us if we're only willing. In Jesus' holy name, and everybody agreed, said, Amen. 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 In the book of John, chapter 14, it says, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God and believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you that I go to prepare a place for you and that I, if I go and prepare that place for you, I will come again and I will take you to myself that where I am you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. And Thomas, one of the disciples, said unto him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him clearly, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have also known my Father. Each one of us have an opportunity to make a decision one of the things that that i experienced in preparing for this uh you're going to love this i was in the shower i was preparing to go and meet uh, parts of the family and the lord said to me you need to remit donald's sin and reading the word two hours every day is something i do and I know what the word says. And I, and I said to the Lord, but Lord, he's dead. When you're dead, judgment is set, for those of you who do not know. And so he said, remit his sin. And I don't believe I understood it when I met with a family as much as I do today. But I, I began to pray in the shower, and I said, Father, in the name of Jesus, I remit his sin. What the Lord was telling me, I had known him, Donald, when he was still angry. The Lord shared with me in that moment that he was angry in the shower, that he was angry because of the passing of his bride. The woman that he had fallen deeply in love with and met no other. 
He loved his wife with all his heart. And when she passed, he got angry at God. I don't know anybody that has a relationship with God that doesn't occasionally get mad at God. But he was angry. He was not just mad. And the Lord told me that he had gotten past it. He told me that he had him in heaven. <clears throat> Excuse me. And before that, I didn't know. I really didn't know. But now I know. And I shared that with the family, along with some other things. And Tabian's mother and uncle gave Tabian and the rest of the grandchildren credit for drawing Donald, their grandfather, great-grandfather, back into relationship with Jesus. Um, some of you know me and some of you don't, but in my way of expressing that's awesome, I'm going to tell you that's really cool. Uh, I know many people probably got mad at Tabian for being so persistent, including his grandfather, at times. But Tabian wouldn't give up. He did not. And I'm not saying that the rest of you didn't have your input because you did. But Tabian didn't give up. He kept after him and kept after him. Because for Tabian, that was the most important thing. Where are you going to spend eternity? Now, for those of you that did not know, you can know he's in heaven. He surrendered his life. He forgave God and got forgiveness himself. That's really, really cool. There were a lot of amazing things about Donald. But the fact that he has a mansion in heaven right now is the most amazing when I met him, and I met him on several occasions, uh, I also shared this with the family. He was very gruff. He uh, was kind of mean almost. He was defensive. He was keeping people out here. But in his core, he was a very gentle, very kind, very loving, very much a family man that would do anything for his family that he could do. And one of the things that apparently he did on a regular basis is provide candy. <laughs> and the family has candy and gum up here on the uh, altar, I guess is what I'll call it. And you're more than welcome to come after the service and grab yourself a piece of candy and celebrate the life of Donald. That would give them great joy. One of the other things that they had shared with me is the time that he invested in his family. When he was working, he would have one of the grandkids or one of the kids with him in the truck, grain truck, or in the combine, or working all night. He was a worker. He was a hard worker. He was a good, honest man that found his way back to Jesus who now sits at the right hand of the Father in Christ Jesus. And he gave each one of you something more precious than you know, an example to follow. He was honest. He was caring. He was generous. Even though he tried to make sure I didn't get too close, he provided the church with what we call a burn ring. It was a tractor tire steel part and we're still using that and uh, he said use it as long as you need it if I want it I'll come get it and uh, but it's still there and we greatly appreciate it we've used it very often and we have given him credit for it as well there is nothing in this world like knowing Jesus no one comes to the Father except that the Spirit of the Lord draw them. And I believe the Spirit of the Lord draw Donald at a very early age is what the Lord is telling me. And he loved Donald. The Lord loved Donald. And when he got angry at the Lord, the Lord understood. 
Well, there were a lot of things that Donald didn't do, even in the midst of his anger. He didn't lash out. He didn't make other people agree with him. He just had his own very strong opinion. <laughs> and if you ask him, he'd give you the benefit of his strong opinion. But he had the wisdom to change when it came time to. I was also privy to know that by the family that he had actually began to prepare them for his leaving. This is when he was healthy. He began to let them know, I am ready. And some of you find that kind of interesting, but because he was a saint, because he was a child of God, he had that right. Once you're satisfied in this life, you can go home. And he had reached the point where he was satisfied. There was more benefit to leaving than staying in a body that would not do what he wanted it to do. Some of you may or may not be aware, but he looks more like this now in heaven than there. There's no pain. There's no tears. Just simple joy. He can run and probably outrun all the rest of us. If you have uh, something that you want to share about your relationship with Donald, be it as a friend or as a grandchild or, or a son or a daughter, whatever uh, you want to say, now is your time to say it. We will give you a mic, and the reason we will is so that others can hear what it is that you want to share, because I know they do want to hear uh, I'm going to tell you in advance, it's 100% okay if you're crying. Everybody get that? You, if, if you watch TV or listen to the world, they, they don't have it right. Real men, real women cry. They have emotions. And that's okay. So anyone want to go first? Come on. Okay, I will. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. Can you hold this? Thanks, Amy. Okay. I got can I have some more pictures of him. Okay. Here. Remember these? Is that the ones? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you want me down the aisle. Okay. Can you hear me through this? Yep. Okay, oh, right excuse up me. here. Hold on to these pictures. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Told you I'd bring them. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to walk everything down before I get to it. Okay. Ready? She couldn't decide which one. Yeah, I couldn't decide which picture if I said, okay, I'm going to bring these. All right, guys. Uncle Doc was very special, and he was... Uncle Doc, can you hear me now? Yeah. <laughs> Found Jack. Huh? Found yeah, Jack. found Jack. Uncle Doc was very special to me. Um, he had a heart of gold. He loved everybody. And I loved him. Also, the, the, probably the most um, memorable thing I think, I don't cry either. Uh, <laughs> probably the most memorable thing I can think about him is when he, I asked him to walk me down the aisle. My dad had died, and uh, I think he was so excited and happy to do that for me. And I'll never forget that about him. So, okay, that's all you say. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. For those of you that are wondering, I've already had COVID and I'm over it, so the only thing you will get from me is antibodies. Me too. <laughs> Anyone else? Oh, I just wonder, uh, for me, he was always a very sweet guy. I, I could see we're maybe arm's length sometimes, maybe a little, <laughs> but I, uh, I, seeing Sandy makes me think of something Edna said once, 
that after she married, well, Aunt, she after she married Uncle Charlie, you got to know the Wells boy. She said, "I married the wrong Wells boy." So after she met Uncle Donald, so, so yeah, a real sweetheart, just generous, a real, real, real. He's the top. Uh huh. You heard that. Yeah, I think I told any of you that are in the family and you want to talk and you don't think you can stand and talk, I'll be happy to give you the microphone as you sit. Next. Grandpa Wells was actually. Grip. <laughs> Grandpa was the best grandpa I can ever have, you know, it's... Time or so with Seagull. And, and you would race Grandpa on the track. Yeah. Lawnmower? Yeah. 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 I used to race him on the tractor and I've most well my life. That's it. Next. I will share this with you. I've been to many funerals and afterwards I've had many people come up and say, I wish I had gotten up and shared this. Eagle and Brain are my nephews. Alicia's my sister-in-law and my friend, best friend. Uh, I know Doc. Alicia babysat my youngest when he was three. My husband's father is black, and Grandpa Doc was his white papa who gave him Pepsi. <laughs> so that's how, you know, my kids recognized him was white papa Doc and Pepsi. And he would take my son out on the combine, and he treated all my kids like they were family. They love him. They love the family. My brother is no longer with Alicia. She will always have a place in my heart, and so will the whole family, regardless of what the difference is of her and my brother. This is my family, and we love you guys. We love you. Uh, my condolences your family you, you have a beautiful wonderful family uh, one of the main things uh, this man has shown me was his love for you guys and it, it goes it went both ways you guys loved him he loved you back um, just just a wonderful grandfather great grandfather to to his children um, every time I was over there just you could just feel the love you know you only get that from families that are special and who are together. And you guys stay together, okay? The Lord's got him now. He's going to take good care of him. He's going to watch over each and every one of you guys until you see him again. And you will see him again. I'm a, I'm a believer in, 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 in God being real. I've seen too many miracles in my own life, okay? Keep your faith. 
That's the main thing. Keep your faith. Do not be angry. I guarantee you he's not angry right now. He's rejoicing. And I want you guys to understand that, you know, you will see him again. This is, this is just goodbye for now. I love each and every one of you. You guys have made me part of your family, you know, with, with open arms. And I appreciate that. I love you all. I love you all. Hang in there. Next. 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 Up with Donald. A lot of memories. Gonna really miss him like everyone else. I remember my first knowledge that he was my uncle. I thought he was a giant. <laughs> my mother took me to a basketball game when he was in his last year of high school. And I couldn't imagine, you know, I'd ever maybe even get close to his height. So he was, he was a giant for the first 10 years. Uh, he did a lot of things for my mother, his brothers. He helped a lot of people. Things he did were unseen and untold. Uh, my mother was very thankful that they lived that close together. And uh, they're just invaluable. And uh, I wish him a great journey. You can do it. I can bring a mic to you. I'll pray for you. You'll get through it. I think I have courage now. Probably not. My grandpa. And Sandy said he walked you down the aisle, but he also walked me down the aisle. Because my dad wasn't the greatest. So he was born of my dad. He was there always. Every basketball game, volleyball game, softball game, he was there. Even if he was late, he'd always show up. He was my biggest fan. <laughs> to my boys. Yes. Extremely great. He always took them out, raced them with the tractors. I don't think I can do that anymore. <laughs> it's beautiful. I got to go on the tractors with them, playing in the green trucks, jumping in the day in the corn or beans. Beans were funner. Were Getting softer. scared of the crickets that were in there with them. The Grandpa telling me to quit it. <laughs> They're dead. <laughs> he always gave me money for the uh, grocery store in Macon when we would sit at the elevator. Wow. Okay. Well, there's a big, huge line. He'd give me some change. Back then, you could buy candy with change. <laughs> Tell me to go get some candy. I didn't realize you were that old. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> but yeah, I think the candy was more for him than it was for me. 
because you'd always steal it. <laughs> you always let me play in the green trucks. You never told me not to. I love you so much. Did good. That was awesome. <laughs> Who's next? I grew up, I'm, I'm a nephew of Donald's. I grew up working with him. And he was actually a father figure, one of, one of my father figures when I was a kid. But when you, when you, uh, there you go. think about how he, what he thought of kids, I have a story involving uh, Donnie. Uh, one time we were, Donald and I were loading uh, soybeans out of a grain bin into a truck. And Donnie was with us. He was about three years old. And I was supposed to be moving the truck up when it got full enough. So he hollered at me, move the truck. Donnie, he was a little farmer. He jumped in that truck. He tried to get into it ahead of me. I picked him up, set him down. He fell down on the ground. He fell on the ground. Uncle Don, everything stopped. It was the first time, last time, I thought I was gonna get my butt kicked by my uncle. <laughs> he picked that little guy up, brushed him off, and we loaded the truck. But that was the day I learned you don't mess with your uncle's kid. <laughs> Even though I didn't hurt him. Yes, sir. Who's next? This is kind of a funny story. Um, my dad and Uncle Doc farmed together for years, lived closely. In this summer, well, y'all know they're very, both were very stubborn. <laughs> and uh, I was at dad's this summer. We were sitting on the front porch. Uncle Doc pulls up in the truck, rolls down the window. You got my pole, Digger? Yeah. And do you remember this? <laughs> and Dad goes, I don't have no pole, Digger. He goes, I got one of my own. Why would I need yours? <laughs> and Uncle Doc goes, well, Susie needs it. So now also, neither one of them could hear very well, so this is a yelling match. And uh, so I told Dad, I go, can't you borrow yours? What an idea. <laughs> Dad goes, well, I suppose so. And Uncle Doc goes, I ain't getting out of the truck. <laughs> okay, I'll walk to the shed and I'll look for it. And I go, I can't find it. But it's just the idea of those brothers, they were something very special to each other. And Uncle Doc was very special to our family too. Who's next? just for, if anybody's taking notes, the second granddaughter. <laughs> 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 um, 
I like to think I was his favorite, but uh, I'm pretty sure we all feel like we were the favorite. Because he made all of us feel special. Like we were the only one that got a butterscotch out of his pocket. Or the only one who got juicy fruit off of the top of the dash on the truck. But Grandpa was so much more to me. <sighs> Sorry. He was an example of what kind of mother I should be to my children. I wasn't around a lot these last uh, few years because we've been blessed enough to experience different parts of the United States. Uh, and I love Michigan. Go blue. Anyway, um, I miss, I wanted to be here, but I do know that who he is, is in me because everything that I know and the person that I've become is because of him and what he showed me to be strong, to work hard, to not give up and fight for what you want and what you know is right. <laughs> and always make people laugh. <laughs> Stick your tongue out if you can't get anything else out of them. <laughs> and we have a lot of pictures of him doing that, so. <laughs> so, Grandpa to me is the legacy that I'm going to live out for the rest of my life and my kids are going to live out Grandpa's legacy. We're never going to forget who he made us. So Grandpa was everything and will always be that for us. So I think that's it. <laughs> I'll remember him as quite the mowing machine. He loved to mow the yard. Yes. And the ditch. And I remember a couple years ago, I couldn't get the backyard mowed because it was just too long. And he came over with his big John Deere tractor and mowed it for me. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> I am uh, Fabian. Uh, I am. I am his grandson. He was a father to me <laughs> more than anyone in my life. There was nothing my grandfather wouldn't do for, for me. And I mean that, anything. My grandfather taught me how to be selfless. He was the living example that I could look to. As how to live a life selfless for others. He was an example of Jesus in my life before I knew Jesus. He lived a life so, so selfless, so loving, that he would do anything for me. And I also saw he would do the same for others, including and not just our family, but those close to our family. Yep. If you asked him for something he, you needed done, 
He would do everything he could to do it. He didn't ask for anything in return at all. He showed me how to be a man of integrity. Sorry. Um, okay, you're fine. I loved him very much. <laughs> And I tried to be there as much as I possibly could. <laughs> because there's people in our family that's told me, spend as much time as you possibly can with him. <laughs> because, because of the inheritance and the wisdom that he could show me, that I'd be able to pass that on to my kids. <laughs> and I cherish that. I cherish that time. There was a lot of things I wanted to do, but because of his example, I laid them aside for him, to be there for him when he couldn't do certain things anymore. It wasn't about me, it was about honoring him the best way I possibly could in the end. And like Pastor Bob had said, the most important thing that I have learned in this life is to know Jesus, the one who created all things, who loves us more than we could ever imagine. And where we spend eternity is the most important question you have to answer. And I spent the last remaining time that I knew he had left to make sure that he had every opportunity to make it right with the Lord once again. And I just wanted to share that with you because it's to encourage you, not to make you sad. We have every single day, every single hour given to us as a blessing from the Lord to make that decision. But it's not a light decision. Thank you. Anyone else? <clears throat> For those of you that have something to share but just can't seem to get it done, just have a quiet time with the Lord and He'll pass it on. It's been a great honor for me to be asked to do this. Uh, I too thought he was a remarkable man. He had a full life. The Lord blessed him with a very wonderful family. I know as much as you thought of him, he thought of you. <clears throat> I know that he was proud of each and every one of you. He saw more in you than you saw yourself. One of the things that the Lord had shared with me was that he was a very good man. When the Lord tells me that someone is a very good man, that carries a lot of weight with me. And some of you may think, you mean the Lord talks to you? Well, yeah, every moment of every day. Some people might think, well, you need a padded room. No. 
The word says that my sheep know my voice and another they'll not follow. How are you going to get to know the voice of your shepherd if you don't talk to him? And he told me that he had him. What that meant was that he was in heaven. He told me that he had dispatched his angels to gather him home. Some of you may or may not understand this at this point in your life. But the Lord blessed him abundantly. He did not suffer. He left on his terms. He wasn't hooked to a machine. He lived it to the last day. Uh, I'm believing that will work for me too. It's a good aspiration. The Lord blessed your day. The Lord blessed your dad. And he still is. He still is. Heaven is a wonderful place. When I got saved, it was just so I could get out of hell because I knew I belonged there. I really didn't know anything about heaven. Didn't really care. Just as long as I got out of hell. But I have come to know and to understand that heaven is a wonderful place. 24 karat translucent gold asphalt. Precious gems as foundation stones. Pearls making up the 12 gates in the New Jerusalem. One pearl per gate. The gates are not small, they're huge. Heaven is an amazing place, and it's to be desired. But there are a lot of benefits and blessings that go with serving the Lord and knowing the Lord. Even, even when you're having a running argument with him, you can be blessed. Some of you don't understand that, and I understand why. But I'm hoping and believing that you'll examine your heart even as Donald examined his, and make the right decision and decide to make peace with God through Jesus Christ, your Lord and your Savior, if you will. If you're here today and you've never done that, you can do that where you're standing now. Just say, Father, forgive me. I want Jesus to be Lord of my life. And then turn and walk in a new direction. Some people say, well, it can't be that easy. It is easy to get saved. The hard part comes walking it out. It's not downhill when you're back. It's a narrow path. But, man, is it worth it. It is so worth it. And if you're fairly young and you think you're just a little bit too young, you're not. You're not at all. Anyone else, I'm going to give you one more chance. If it's burning in your spirit, you need to come up here and share it. Before I close it out, uh, the family would like you all to know that we're having a dinner at the... Um, Faith Outreach Center uh, in Moequa. Uh, there are maps here um, that you can get if you don't know where it is. Um, and I actually take you right to it. <laughs> <coughs> and those of you that know anything about Moequa, go to the golf course, keep heading west. And when you get about a mile and a quarter past the golf course clubhouse, you go down in the dip, take the first driveway. It's about 800 feet off the road, and it's just a pole barn. It's a simple, small church. You, you can miss it, but don't. The food's good. <laughs> Y'all are welcome. Let us bow. Father, in the name of Jesus, we're so grateful for all the testimonies that have come forth, giving honor to you and Donald. 
we're so grateful that you raised him up to be the man that he is and that the influence that he planted in each of these that are gathered here, including myself, would bear a continual harvest, that we too would learn how to be Christ in the world, that we would learn the generosity of spirit and the value of hard work and dedication. As we leave this place, help us to release the heaviness and bind ourselves to the peace of knowing that he is in a better place. The joy of understanding that he's in your presence and that he has no pain, that he's rejoicing to be there and excited for all that he's accomplished in the lives of his family and his friends, that they too would come and be with him where he is at. Bless our travel as we leave this place. In Jesus' name, and all of God's children said, amen. amen. Thank you all for coming. Once again, the family gives you an invite to come and eat. Oh, and don't, don't forget the candy. <laughs> 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 <laughs>